Hello fellow educators, this is Brandon Clayton. I want to share with you in the few minutes that we have uh, today how a, a couple of tips when sh uh, teaching your students. Um, some you may know, some you may not have known, but ones that I've come to enjoy along with the platform that our tutor offers. So the couple of things I want to mention to you today are on your screen and are as follows. So by the end of this video, you will know how to Share your screen with your students, build a Google slide to share with your students, and use the IP vote annotator. So I'm going to talk about that here in a second, the IP vote in it annotator. But first, let's talk about sharing your screen with your students. Now, this is a feature that I'm sure many of you are familiar with already, but I, I still want to show it just to be sure you are aware of it if you haven't tried it or haven't felt comfortable with it. So here's a video that I've done here in the past. And I can't pull up an actual video, obviously, because I don't have a class or a class coming up here really soon. So I can't get into it, but I can at least show you right up here um, this screen picture with this arrow on it. If you click on that, it'll give you the option to share your screen. If you got more than one screen, you can click on the screen that you want to be uh, public and made, and made available to the student. So w the reason I love this uh, feature so much is because it gives me the opportunity to use the tools on my own screen and take advantage of my whole screen as opposed to um, the, the the limited tools that I may have with the iTutor um, platform so if you have something already built and you want to use that and you have a system on your computer that works well for you you might find that this is more enjoyable another uh, piece to keep in mind is that it's important for, with iTutor that you have a picture available. So the cool thing about this is when you share your screen, iTutor automatically puts that picture, so you stay in front of your camera, but it puts your, puts your picture up here so that you don't have to worry about it. So I may not be able to see my picture while I'm recording, but my picture is um, here, so I'm looking at a past recording now, and that's what I'm looking at, so that's what I see there. So, so those are some of the reasons that I tend to prefer to use the screen share as opposed to the, the platform provider. While it does have a lot of tools, I feel more comfortable using the ones that's available on my computer. So we're going to get to the tool that I like to use that I'm talking about that's available um, here in just a second. Before I do that, I want to talk about a Google slide. Just I'm um, generally building a Google slide. So let me go back to my screen. And so you see my slides up here. And let me maximize this so um, just generally building Google slide you're gonna go to your I'm, I'm gonna kind of get out of this and see if I can show this to you better <clears throat> so you're gonna go to your Google Drive and you are just gonna create your slides um, most of us may know how to do this so it's, it's just creating um, your slides the way you normally would create them um, I, I'm just gonna let you briefly look at the way I've created mine that is helpful for me you may have a system that's better or works for you but what's worked for me is I have a slide that usually is like the one you're seeing here. Here's my introduction slide. And then I have a slide discussing what we'll talk about as well as get into the actual content. And one of the things I found that's helpful is as I'm going through my slides, I include uh, the problems and the space in order to work those problems. So I don't have to come up with something at the, at that moment. So I already have something kind of built, built in there. So I can, I would encourage you to do the same or something similar that's easy for you. Um, I usually finish by going back over the items that we've talked about so um, um, we can close in that way. You may want to include the exit, exit ticket or something of that nature, but I think that's probably basic for many of us who are already on an online platform, um, but if not, you might want to consider something like that. Now, it doesn't have to be Google Slide. It could be any uh, PowerPoint. Um, because if you're sharing your screen, you're just going to share whatever screen you have. Um, but this is a method that I found pretty nice. So the last one I want to talk about is the IPVO. So what is IPVO? And this is the one that I get really excited about because um, this is an annotator. So if you, it's available for both Mac and PC. And a wonderful thing about it is it's free. So the IPVO, is, is, you can see this little link up here. Uh, if I ask it to show, so it gives me this little toolbar by which I can begin to annotate on my screen whatever it looks like. So here's the website for ipvo.com, support QA annotator. If you just Google ipvo annotator, you should be able to find that pretty easily. But I want to go to my screen 
as if I'm teaching class to show you what this will look like if I were teaching. So if I'm teaching this lesson and I'm going through these points and I'm having this discussion and I actually at some point want to write or say something, what I would do is go up here and usually this is open. I'll just keep this open on every page as you see it stays there and it begins to write on the screen. So if I click this pin button here, it gives me uh, some options. They give me two pins. So they give you two pin options and you get uh, you can change the colors of those pins. Um, you can change the thickness of the how the pen writes, uh, whether it's a fountain pen or disappearing ink, where it disappears after a few seconds. It's just a really cool stuff. Uh, a lot of things that teachers get into. Um, another piece is here. If you're doing math like me, this is really fun because you get a, a, a suite of shapes that you can pick from and draw pictures. Especially like for this lesson, where I'm talking about triangles and um, um, different shapes for supplementary and complementary angles. Um, we're given the protractor that we can actually use to measure incredibly. So you can actually write and measure with this um, this piece. So that's really cool. Uh, you get some stamps that you can use if someone's doing a great job and you want to show that. Um, you can actually even in, put the plus sign to include some pictures that you want to be able to just stamp out quickly um, for those purposes. Here's an eraser if I did something wrong. I can make big or small. So you can just kind of erase there. If you just have a, a small thing you want to get rid of. Um, and here's my arrow. This is important too because when I want to go back to controlling my screen, I can just go back to the arrow. Now when I click, it clicks through the slides for me and I can use my um, my annotator to do that. Now I, I forgot to mention that it's important that if you're going to use this, what makes it easy for me is I actually have a pen, um, a Wacom writing tablet, so I'm actually able to write. So when I can draw a triangle and the numbers, they're much easier for me. So if you have a mouse, that may be more difficult, but you can still take advantage of some of these features if you're able to use them. Um, this box gives us some more items as far as a protractor ruler. You can spotlight something and say, I really want to zoom in on this particular piece. So I really want us to focus on this part right here and make that, make that bigger. So you don't want their attention going anywhere else because you got a lot of writing over there. So you just like, I want you to focus on that. That's pretty cool. Um, you make it a square or a circle. Um, I don't use that a lot, but I think I probably should. Yeah. All right. So this is, and this back button and uh, redo button is the same as every other system you've used. You can, if you make a mistake and you want to go back, you can keep pressing the back button to do so or go forward to bring it back again. Sometimes I would use this um, if I make a mistake, um, but actually I was about to talk about this little trash can. So if I've done a lot of work on here and it's time for me to go to my next slide, I can press the cursor arrow and press click and it takes me to my next slide. But guess what else is on my next slide? all the annotations I've made and I don't want those there. So usually before I proceed to the next slide, I would delete and put in the trash everything before I go on. And now I'm ready for a new screen. So it doesn't carry that writing, you know, that would be nice. It doesn't carry the writing from your last slide if you want to go back. Some students say, can we go back to check the work? And this doesn't allow me to do that. Now, if you're interested in doing that, you might want to look at uh, Microsoft Word has a drawing feature and it does you, it allows you to scroll up a, a Word document and annotate that way. So that's something I consider sometimes as well. Um, these last three are pretty interesting too. So if I wanted just a blank screen, I could click this button here and it gives me a blank canvas by which I can write and have a discussion about anything. So if I just needed to illustrate something, um, this piece here allows me to have two separate screens. I could pick one side to be a color when I write and the other side a completely different color. So it changes colors over here on both sides. Um, now a question you may be asking is can the students write on here? So since it's your screen they're not able to write so this is only useful for illustrative purposes. Um, it's more ideal oftentimes if you have a student that's absent um, to, to use it this way um, because you're going to be I don't want to say lecturing, but you're doing more of the presenting, obviously, because no one else is here to talk to and annotate. So you could go back and forth between the two as well if you found that to be useful. And down here are some tools for taking screenshots and even recording your broadcast. So you can actually record everything you're doing on here or take screenshots of it 
if you wanted to. So those are some of the cool features of IPVO Annotator. And I'm gonna pull that back up again for those who wanted to see that. So here's this um, website. And as you can see, it's useful for both Mac and PC. So that is such a cool thing. And I have it on both Mac and PC and they're both fantastic to use, um, especially on the iTutor platform. <clears throat> Guys, I hope that was helpful in understanding one additional way you could use another tip when teaching your students, both present or absent, and how you can construct your slides, and definitely the IPVO annotator, and how that may be useful to you going forward. All right, thanks for your time.